welcome back inside OVFL Live. I uh, have on the phone with me right now a man who had a bit of a rush a couple of days ago. He uh, kind of walked face first into a story that is pretty significant to me, and that's my awful attempt to segue bringing on Scott Radley with a sweet jam from Rush. Scott, are you there? I am here. I tried my best to, to fade in the Rush for you. How'd I do? It was awesome. Yeah, you got a little nostalgia going on? I, I'm misty-eyed right now. <laughs> I think, uh, do, do people cry at Rush concerts? Is it like a religious experience? You know, the only people who cry at Rush concerts are the same people who voted to keep them out of the Hall of Fame forever. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? I, you only the only re, the only tears are tears of joy and awe at the musicianship of these guys. Yeah. The uh, I have to admit, back when I uh, liked to play the drums a little bit in my spare time because my dad had a kit, the first guy that I knew about was uh, Mr. Pert. He yeah, was yeah. he was the go-to, and I would just watch YouTube videos of him being incredible. Over imagine and over. how different the Beatles would have been if Neil Peart had been the drummer instead of Ringo Starr. Yeah, imagine that. Then maybe would they still rag on uh, on Peart like they do with uh, with Ringo? I actually I played a clip when it was Ringo's birthday on this show not too too long ago, where uh, they basically just rip Ringo two or three times right before a song starts. It's one of the songs that he was singing. Um, and they just make fun of him openly. So, yeah, I don't think uh, Neil would have put up with that. Probably not. He would have thrown a drumstick, and he probably would have had deadly accuracy with drumsticks. Yeah, true. He uh, he is very, uh, very, very entertaining. Also, he was uh, on the CFL hockey coverage, was he not? Or it's not NHL on TSN, I should say. Yeah, he, they didn't they do a version of Hockey Day in Canada? Yeah, they tried to do it, and it was just like an awesome, awesome opening that was... I, I, I love the drums, so to me it was great, but there was a lot of mixed reaction on that, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, there was because you just don't think of a drum solo for the opening no. of Hockey Night in Canada. But, you know, why not? If you're going to have it with anybody, have it with him. But well, that's Canada, eh? Exactly. Just, exactly. Just put on your favorite band. Um, I have Mr. Radley on the show because, uh, as I mentioned, he uh, ran into a bit of a story on Saturday or, or late in the week last week, uh, which I kind of woke up. I worked late Friday evening and... I woke up Saturday morning and I was scrolling through my Twitter and I saw the headline and I was just like, oh, I, I like to check out Scott's work because I enjoy it. So I clicked on it and uh, I instantly got angry because I'm directly at the center of what's going on in the article, which is that Sportsnet has decided to pull their coverage of the uh, OUA regular season. Maybe, Scott, start off by explaining kind of how this came about or how you, you figured out what was um, well, I, going yeah, on. Marshall, I just hadn't seen the uh, schedule for what was going to be shown on on Sportsnet. Now that I mean, a year ago, they got the rights to CIS Sports, and they yes. the plan clearly is that they're going to show championships, men and women's hockey, men and women's basketball, football, bowl games, Mitchell and UTech and Vanier Cup. Um, but last year with Sportsnet 360, they showed. I believe it was 10 regular season and playoff Ontario football games and then the three bowl games. Right. And I hadn't seen anything yet. And so when I asked, I suddenly discovered that, well, yeah, they're not doing it this year. And the there are two different answers for why they're not doing it, depending on who you talk to. Right. There are those at the OUA, uh, which are administrators and coaches and others, who believe this is an offshoot of... Sportsnet's $5.2 billion hockey deal. It is just a massive beast that's swallowing up everything right. and is absorbing too much of the staffing. That's that's the belief that many people within the OUA community have. The, oh, the Sportsnet themselves say the reason is, no, the ratings for OUA football and other OUA sports were just so low that it didn't make any value for them to continue to doing this, which there may be something to that. And and that raises a question. I think that is the secondary thing is they are a private company. Uh, they are entitled to do with their air, what they want to do with their air. Yes. But what about a comp- What about something like the CBC? Uh, what about other places that uh, I know cable 14 is still going to be doing this. Where is the balance? Like if you've got something like OUA sports and I, or college sports anywhere across the country. This, to me, seems to be one of those areas 
that there is a value, maybe not necessarily monetarily in a deep pocketed way, but a value to having that kind of exposure. And, and I really believe that as soon as this goes off the air, in many people's eyes, if we are inundated with every single sport in the world, right. and OUA sports can't get on the air, what does that actually say about the value of it to people who are not really familiar with it? If they yeah. just hear that they can't get a game on TV, it must suck. Like yeah. It must really suck. If you, we can have hours and hours of darts and poker and billiards and talk shows and everything else, but the one thing that can't be on there is... Ontario University Sports, man, that must be horrible. And on Canadian television, this has to be one of the main properties. In my mind, it should be. I know it's not. I know there's many faults in it. You've you've broken down some of them. But the, the first thing I think about is just how disappointing that is for the people that are involved in the actual league itself because I'm a part of it right now. And I know when I told the guys about it, like we didn't play for TV. You know, we don't get up and we're not like in the eighties where you, you know, you paint your abs and you paint your shoes gold and you're on TV and you tell your girlfriend and she's obsessed with it. And she tells her whole family and all of that. But there was, there was times when we were playing in marquee games, whether it was at Western homecoming, that's where Kyle Quinlan had his breaking out party in 2009. That was before I was at McMaster, but that was covered by university rush on the score when they were, weren't owned by Sportsnet yet. And that was, that was a big, big moment for McMaster to have that game televised because that was a breakout win, and that kind of created the star that Quinlan became, and now we're going to lose some of those moments. Yeah, it, it, it is difficult because you're right. You're not necessarily – well, you're not playing for that, but it gives it credibility. And if you if you take that away, there are things you lose, and a lot of it is the exposure. Leaving aside a guy like you being seen on TV, if I'm a sponsor, if I'm a corporate group – that Glenn Grunwald or whoever now the AD of McMaster is going to go and hit up for a donation to right. help fund my program. And let's, I'm company ABC, and they say, okay, I'm willing to give some money towards your program. This has nothing to do with the ratings or the sales of things on the advertising on the TV. This is directly to the school. I say, okay, my company ABC, where, where is it going to be seen now? What kind of exposure do I get? Yeah, well, exactly. before, you could have said, well, it'll be on the sidelines so that as the camera goes by, people will see it and that kind of thing. Now, that doesn't exist. So now, if I am company ABC, do I want to put my corporate sponsorship dollars into OUA football or basketball or whatever? Or do I want to find another sports property or another way of getting my name out there that could still be generous and still be used for almost philanthropic purposes, but that gives me bang for my buck. That, to me, is where the problem comes. And then, if you start pulling all this money, not immediately, we're not talking immediately, we're talking over the next few years, if some of these companies start pulling back, yeah. how is Ontario University Sports going to improve? Mm -hmm. I mean, already, I think everybody understands, using football as the example, there is a massive, massive financial gap between a school like Laval and almost everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. If And McMaster has tried through various ways, a 13th man program and other things, to close that gap. But if that grows further, how do you then continue to improve this, the game? How do you continue to close that gap? Or do you simply acknowledge now that barring a miracle – like what you guys did in 2011 when everybody knows what McMaster did in the Vanier Cup and played. Hey, Scott, that was that was all hard work. Did. That was hard well, work, sure my was. friend. That, no, I'm joking. No, it, <laughs> it, I, I absolutely know it was, but it was also the game of your lives. You guys played yeah, yeah, absolutely. a great game and beat Laval in double overtime. Now, it was fantastic. It took 53 attempts and 500 yards from Kyle to beat a team by a field goal in double overtime. So, yes, right. you are correct. So how many times is a school now going to beat Laval if the money – starts going down and you can't do the recruiting and you can't do the extra training and you can't do this and that and the other. It just, it, the problem to me, it's a start and I'm not entirely blaming Sportsnet because again, their business is their business, but it is yep. something that is the start of something that could really begin to hurt Ontario University sports and leave the level going down and leave the chasm between the huge schools around the country and everyone else so big that there really may not be any competition. I, I have no expectation, truly, I have no expectation that in the next decade, Laval will lose more than one Vanier Cup, and I don't know who that would even be to. 
Yeah, and I I can't make an argument against that because like you you, you interviewed uh, Tuffy Knight, former Laurier coach on the Sports Lounge, which you host um, on CHML AM nine hundred, and he talked about kind of the haves and have nots and his fear for the growth of Canadian football, and that was before we lost this kind of coverage. And now I'd love to get his thoughts on it, but you also talked about um, Laval and playing in Quebec and their dominance. I find it interesting that that the CBC was covering games in Quebec in a league where there was really zero question of who's going to win that league year in, year out, yet somehow they're still willing to to put that product forward. There's no real dominant character in OUA football like that. It's pretty much wide open year after year. There's three or four favorites, sure, but it's this is an interesting product because the parity from the top four to the bottom four night might not be great, but I know from playing in the league that any given Saturday, anybody in the middle six has a chance to win. And I thought that that would make this situation a bit different and make our league more interesting, but apparently it doesn't. Last year, uh, Calgary uh, blew through everybody on the way to play in the Vanier Cup. And then, I I don't want to say they got smoked in the Vanier Cup, but they were, for most of the game, until it got out of hand, they were hanging on by their fingernails. Yeah, they were scratching for every inch. To keep it close. And it, you never had the sense at any point in that game that anything was going to happen except for a Laval win. Yeah. And there is a reason for that. When you've got Laval with, I don't know what the number is, five or six million dollar budget, right. you've got a whole bunch of full time assistant coaches, you're going south for training camp. It's not just that they can do those things, and it's not just that they can have better coaching, and it's not just that they can go south. It's that if you're a kid playing football in Quebec, and you're any good, What is your? where do you go to school? Yep. If you can go to Laval, every single kid who's any good is probably going to choose to go to Laval. And so these programs, when there is money there and an opportunity to do things, it becomes a recruiting tool as well. I know you wrote this piece that's online today talking about Mac's new quarterback, Asher Hastings. He came to Mac, I yeah. understand, because he saw Mac on TV. Yep. Yeah, it was the, the instigator of his interest in the entire school, and it's it's something that when Brian Crawford as well, the executive director of the OUA that I spoke to, when he said um, that, you know, we contributed money to the broadcast. So we paid for the production costs to bring our product, our OUA football, to people around the country. And we didn't really get any monetary value out of it. Because I'll be honest, my first thought, just because I'm I'm so focused on, you know, American football and how money works there, is, well, if we're losing the TV contract, then the league and in effect, the schools must be out a ton of money. So I looked into it and, uh, you know, this might just be me not being knowledgeable enough, but um, we pay them to produce our product. We don't, we don't lose any money from that. There's actually money laying around on the table now because we don't have to pay them to produce our games because they've decided not to. And in effect, we're losing that exposure that brings people like Asher interest and, and knowledge from around the country. I've been in, when I went to training camp with the Calgary Stampeders last year, I got there and everybody, players, coaches, people that came out to practice that were fans, they read an article on me being there and being a quarterback from the master. And they would run up to me and say, oh, damn, are you Quinlan? I would say, <laughs> and which is a question I've got a thousand times over. I don't mind. He's really good at football. I understand the question. But they would ask have you, me. Have you ever got a free meal out of saying yes? Never. I never. No. Not once. About doing that. I got kicked out of a restaurant once for saying I was Kyle. No. <laughs> um, but they would ask me that question. And I'd be like, no, 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 like I'm, I'm Marshall. I'm the guy that came after him kind of thing. I, I follow him up. I backed him up in the Vanier though. And they went, oh, you're that guy that had the really long blonde hair. I say, yep. And they go, damn, man, I watched that game on TSN. That was unbelievable. I can't, and you know, that's obviously different because Sportsnet is still going to broadcast the UTEC, the Mitchell and the Vanier cut. But in general, the ability to cover game to game, that exposure, I experienced that when I went out west because random people that I thought would have zero interest, even the equipment guy, Georgie, that works out in Calgary, he he came up to me their very first day. He said, I'm so glad you got one on those Laval guys. And that's a message that I know, Scott, you've heard time and time again covering McMaster and being in the city of Hamilton from that game. But the TV side of it, its ability to impact people far outside the range that you think because TV is so easily accessible, that yeah. that completely changes the dynamic of Canadian sport. I think that it works as a recruiting tool. If it's, if, if people see a well done network broadcast of any sport, but uh, uh, specifically a university or high school, even whatever, it looks like a big deal. I, I was involved a number of years ago because my son plays baseball 
yes. was the Canadian Little League Championship. You turn on the TV and watch the Little League World Series when you've got ABC and ESPN producing this. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the actual level of play is, though it's very good. Every single kid who plays baseball wants to be in that event. And why is that? Because it's on TV and it looks like it's a big deal because a big network with big hosts and big production values are making it a big deal. If you were to take away the TV from way back from the Little League World Series, want to know how many people would actually be aware it was even going on? Not very many. Not very many. TV has this ability. And I know that the OUA through, and there's a, uh, another company that's involved, I can't remember the name, are doing this OUA TV now, where all the games yeah, are going to be streamed it, online. Stretch Internet, I believe, is in there charge of OUA TV. And that's great. That, that's great that the ball is being picked up and that someone is doing that. And whether the production is fantastic or something less, it, it really is irrelevant. It's great that you can go online now and watch. The issue you have is, I'm not entirely sure that is all of the audience that you want. Part of the point of being on regular TV is that I could be sitting on my couch flipping channels and I suddenly forget that the game's on and go, oh, hey, my alma mater's playing. Let's stay around and look. That's never now going to happen on a web stream because you have to go and look for that web stream. So there is something lost there. I'm not not being down on that. That's a great, I suppose, second option. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't do exactly the same as what TV does. Right. And I, you know, as a counterpoint to that, I agree that it's it's going to be difficult to compare the two because they are so different. But like you're saying, a web stream doesn't flash in front of your face and grab your interest. Flipping through channels does. But as a corollary to that, do you think that the number of, you know, sports streaming network Canada, SSN, um, OUA TV was going to happen, I think, regardless of whether or not this deal went down, do you think that the ability to get games streamed online may have hurt Sportsnet's decision making and wanting to cover the game. It's not going to pull a huge amount of people away, but if they can watch a game at their own leisure without comfort, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Do you think that had any impact on their decision making? I doubt it. I, I really don't think that that would have uh, would have made any impact. I, I think that I, I think that probably um, what Sportsnet said about the ratings was very legitimate. That the yeah. ratings were not great. I I do wonder about the number of bodies and, and, and what this TV uh, with the NHL, what the deal, what impact that may or may not have had. But regardless, we now end up at the spot where university sports has essentially gone to the point of being almost invisible unless you really, really, really seek it out. Right. That, to me, is unfortunate, and that, to me, is a place where even though CBC Sports is fading into oblivion almost, right. it seems. That would be something that with hockey being gone, essentially, in the fall, somewhere they could step in. Don't even have to do it with the full CBC you know, crew. You could do a, a lower-scale thing, but at least that it would get on the air where people could see it. That, that to me, now is what CBC Sports should be about. If they're not going to do professional games, if they're not going to do the huge production things, at least this is something where you can still continue to have a presence and serve a purpose that is not necessarily just for ratings or just for dollar value, that it serves the public and serves by covering something that is being left alone that is of importance to people in this country. We will see if that's something they'd be interested in. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, I completely agree. And we have about three minutes left, so this question is probably way too hard to answer in less than three minutes. But from my opinion, and I'm not good at business dealings and money transfers and whatnot rights, but why not TSN? What am I missing here? They have five networks that are coming out. They just lost hockey to Sportsnet. They enjoy backstories. They do great features. They could show the highlights like they already do on SportsCenter. It'd be their own product. They already have a CFL and TSN crew. All these things I wrote about in this article I put together... I, I understand that it's a tough pill to swallow, like you said in your article about TSN not wanting to broadcast the regular season games and then lose the finals to um, to Sportsnet, but is that not the way that it was in 2011 when we were on University Rush all throughout the regular season and then the greatest game ever played, apparently, in the 2011 venue against Laval was on TSN? I would say there's two answers to your question. The first one is 
uh, at the time when University Rush was on, that was the score, which was definitely at the time the smallest of the... The rogue network. And, and so for them, they were happy to not necessarily have the championship. TSN did that, but to fill the gaps. That was great content for them. Right. So it is... It would be, I think, difficult for TSN to think, okay, we are going to promote this. We're going to promote it and promote it and promote it. And then when people get really interested, someone else is going to show it. That seems to almost be helping the competition. The second thing is it does cost money to produce these things. It really does. And so you are going to, if TSN is going to look at this, in the modern world where they are paying so much money for rights for things now, which we just talked about with, uh, with the hockey is TSN looking at this, that this is a good business decision? And that's the complicating part of this whole thing. If this is a bad business decision, you can sort of wrap your head around Sportsnet and TSN not doing it. But again, that's where we come back to our national public taxpayer-funded broadcaster yes. that may be the place that this should land. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we can both agree it needs to find a home as soon as possible because when I talked to Jeff Giles, he said there's no way that if this doesn't get solved soon that it's going to be a healthy relationship. No, and I clearly, though, with what you said earlier in the show, I clearly blame you because they were willing to broadcast games when you had that lush head of long blonde hair, and as soon as you shaved it, oh, so they I'm the, curse. The, con- the contract is no, it's no longer worth showing football because Marshall's hair isn't there. Capito's yeah. hair is there. But yours isn't. Yeah, that was uh, that was a bright spot in my my existence. I'll admit that was one of my greatest moments. So, um, I guess I'll have to uh, play you out for now, Scott. Uh, I'll give you a little bit more of uh, Rush YYZ to help you on your way. But I thank you for the time. I appreciate as always the conversation and uh, really good article on uh, on why why it's an issue and why I think we should need to find a solution as soon as possible because I know I don't really care if it's on TV necessarily right away this year because you know I'm not that selfish I don't really care about watching myself play games over and over again but it's always been a fun part of playing in the OUA so I hope it gets solved soon thanks Marshall people can hear you soon on the sports lounge they can tune in there yes you'll be on there cross promotion that's what we do here the sports lounge uh, CHML AM 900 and when are you back from your summer exodus the day after your first game oh wow after Labor Day Excellent. Awesome. I'll talk to you then, Scott. Have a good one. Thanks, you too. That was Scott Radley of the uh, Hamilton Spectator.